Hey residents of Meeple Town, have you ever gone on a walk on the beach or, or gone down a neat trail and you find these little knickknacks or just something like cool and you pick it up and you take it home and you get back from your vacation or whatever and you ever do anything with it? Well, we're not going to be doing that in this game. In this game, we're actually going to be true collectors of these curious objects that we find. We're going to be putting them into our whatnot cabinet. What The Whatnot Cabinet is designed by Dr. Finn, Steve Finn, also Eduardo Baroff, and the art is by Beth Sobel. I say let's get this thing to the table and let's check out The Whatnot Cabinet. All right, Meeple Town, so we have The Whatnot Cabinet set up and we are ready to play this thing. Now, this game is actually pretty simple, actually very simple to teach and it plays pretty quick. I'm pretty much just gonna dive in. What we're gonna be doing basically is grabbing these curious objects, these knickknacks from the outdoors area here. We'll be drawing some out of the bag depending on what action we take. And when we grab these, we're gonna be placing them into our whatnot cabinets and we're gonna be filling it up with 12 tiles and the game's over. And the way we place them is super important, which I'll talk about that as we play. Um, I've got the scoring card left here so I can show you all what that looks like a little pretty simply. But we're also going to be racing for some of these 1.2 points. Um, cars, whoever gets to them first actually gets it. So for example, if I have one row uh, each with three different objects and then another row with three of the same objects, I snake this up, I grab this bad boy up, I get two points at the end of the game. In addition to that, I am going to score in this game, we're going to score one additional point. I'll just put this card up here. We're going to score one additional point for every crystal that we have. So anytime we put a crystal object in here, we score a point. And also every game, we're going to score a point every time that we get one of these tiles with a crown in it. So every time we have one of these crowns in our, for every object we have with a crown in our whatnot cabinets, we are going to uh, score a point. So let's just dive in and let's play this thing. In every other player count, or in a three or four player game, we're gonna only have one of these pawns a piece to take actions. In a, in a two player game, we're going to have both of them. So uh, to set it up, since orange will be first player, orange will be first and then last, and then teal will be the two middle places. So I think to start off, let's see here. And the other thing about this is, is this is gonna determine turn order. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I jump out and take this because um, because you get I can go first next time and it's less risky because this tells me I can draw I draw three tiles out of the bag I keep two of them and then I discard one of them which later in the game that's super risky here it's not as risky but I see a crystal in the outdoors and I see three um, crowns here which that is super intriguing. And I think I've got to do that. I think I've got to go ahead and take these. These are just points sitting right here. So I'm going to take my pawn and I think I'm going to do this action where this is going to have me take one tile from the bag. I'm going to place it into the outdoors and then I'm going to take two tiles from the outdoors and place it into my whatnot cabinet. I kind of need to look at some of these. So if there's a different object in each row, I'll score the point. If you complete a row and a column first, you gain two points four of the same object anywhere. So we see that there's three animal types right here and they all have crowns. So I could take two of those and already be on, well on my way to this. And then this says one column each of four different color and four same. So wow, this is, this is a ton of crowns out here on the board, which one thing I don't like about it is now, now this is super valuable because this is not only a crown for a point, it's also a crystal. I was hoping to maybe grab some of these animals here because I could head towards this four of the same object, but I, I can't do that. I can't give her, my opponent here, um, a crystal and that's just straight up two points. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. I'm going to put this up here in the corner. Um, I think I'm also going to take this and place it here. All right, so let me show you all the, the scoring card real quick and the reason that I put these two tiles here. So in this game, if it's all about color when it comes to column. And the most points that you can score is having a column with all of the same color. So I've got that started right here. Now I'll go ahead and just, while well, I've got this up here, if I have four different colors, then I'm gonna get two points, that's not bad. If I have anything else, I score nothing. On rows, I'm going to score points for one point if I have a row of three different objects. Now, now that's objects, not colors. 
object types. And then here I'm going to score three points. My big point maker is if I have the same object in each row. So what I'd like to do is maybe grab these animals and get them over here so that I could have the same objects and score some points. But that is the end of my turn. Now my opponent looks at this and she's thinking that this looks pretty nice as well. Um, so for her first action, she's gonna go down here and she's gonna add now two. So as you get further right, they kind of get progressively better, but you're gonna go later in turn order. So she's gonna draw two randoms from the bag and place them out here. Now this tile right here is special. This tile basically acts very similarly to this fourth to the fourth action. And it allows me to sweep every tile out of the outdoors and replace four with four new ones and then pick one. So this is actually could be a good action. For example, if she's kind of thinking, I don't want like as a defensive you know move to not let me have some of these, she could sweep them all away, but then you never know. I mean, she could draw four, that would be really helpful. She doesn't really care about this right now. She's gonna get to go again. Um, instead, let's see here. She likes the crystal here, but she also likes that animal thing that I was thinking about doing by trying to get a row of the same type of animals. Um, and also recognizing that if she has four of the same object type, she can grab that right off the bat. Plus, if she could get a row of, of the same type, she would also be well on her way to do that. So what she's gonna do with her first, is she's going to start a row up top with these two animals. And that's two points right there at the end of the game. So that's pretty sweet. For her second action, because she gets to go again, she doesn't love what's in the outdoors. Um, and she's thinking that she might want to take one of these two so that she can kind of head towards having, you know, first or second turn, not having the last two turns or something. So she's not going to take this action. You, of course, cannot take an action that's already been taken. So this one is basically, this is going to allow her to, she's going to draw two tiles and um, when she draws two tiles, she's going to take one of the tiles and then she's going to place the other into the outdoors. I think she's going to do that. I think she's going to go over here because she's going to kind of force me to take this. So she's going to draw two tiles. Now, the one thing about this, this is a little bit risky because she has to take one of these two tiles. And wow, that was perfect for her, actually, because look at that. Boom, she gets an animal, which is exactly what she wanted. So she's going to take the one tile um, from that. And again, this is really cool, by the way, if you ever wonder what these act, these icons mean. It's just very well written out here. Draw two tiles, take one, place the other in the outdoors, then take any one from the outdoors. So I think that's actually pretty neat. So right now this row is complete, so she scores it. And she's gonna get, like I said, if you have the same type, then and it tells you right here, if you have the same type, you score a three-er, and you're just gonna put that three points next to that row right there. Okay, that is her first move. For her second, she's drawing something out of here. And so there's a couple that are interesting. Number one, that crystal is interesting to her because it's worth a point, but also that crown is interesting because it's worth a point as well. Now, what she's going to do is I think she's going to take the crystal to play keep away for me, recognizing that I've got a crystal here and that might be exactly what I want to take next if I were to do that. So she's going to take this crystal and she's going to have to place it. The negative is, I mean, she could also take this tile. She's going to do that. She's going to take this tile and wipe it away. So she's gonna take this, which again, wipes away all these. These are discarded. Oops. Um, four new ones come out and then she's gonna draw. She was a little nervous because she didn't want to like give me something really great. On the flip side, she's trying to get some matching colors here. And so let's see what happens. Alrighty. Okay, so she does have that's exactly what she wants. That's a perfect one for her. It's a crystal that scores her a point. It's a crown that scores her a point and it's green. So she's on her way here to having the same color column. All right, so what do I wanna do? Um, I like those purple tiles. If I could just, if there was an action left where I could take two tiles from the outdoors, just boom like that, I can if I do this, but I have to sweep all those away. I would easily take it and have two of those you know, ready to roll. That whole row completed and score me four points at the end of the game, but I don't have that. Um, I think at this point in the game, I'm gonna do this kind of maybe risky-ish move, uh, and I'm gonna draw two tiles from the bag. And this one is I draw two ti three tiles, I'm sorry, and I keep two is what I meant to say. I'm gonna draw three tiles from the bag and keep two of them. Wow, look at that, boom. A couple purple ones, and that one's a crystal like I just need, I mean, there's, that's exactly what I'm gonna do, right? No reason to do anything else. 
<sighs> There's always these interesting pulls in this game because I could take this animal to go ahead and you know get closer on this, but I think while I can, I'm gonna lock in having this row completed. I could also put this up here to head towards completing that, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna while I can do it, I'm gonna do it. And this get this gets discarded. So I'm gonna get that, which means that this is gonna score me four points at the end of the game. Okay, that's it. So what we do at the end of the round, we're gonna discard these tiles and we're gonna draw four more. So let's do that. Okay, one, two, three, four. And now we're gonna go into turn order. We're gonna change these for the turn order here. Um, yeah, so I'll show one more really quick round. I'm not gonna play through the whole thing. I think you all get the gist of what's going on, but let me just play through a fairly quick uh, other round here. Okay, so I like this with that crystal. It would line up with that. So I am going to, let's see. I like this one. Um, I also see that she loves loves green. So, I mean, if I were playing mean, I could try to sweep some of those greens away. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm tempted to take this one. I think I'm going to take this, which, again, is a little bit of risk because I'm going to draw two out of the bag first. After I draw two out of the bag, I have to take one of these two, which were two greens. And that was an absolutely bad draw for me because I don't have any of these, the leaf type plant, and, uh, and I don't have any shells. So that was horrible, except for this does have a crown, so I'm gonna take it. I'm also, so that's gonna eliminate my chance to have, you know, three of the same object. Now I still score one point if I get three different. And so when I'm looking over here, I'm looking at what I'm gonna do next, which is I'm gonna take this. There's still a bottle there. Um, so crystal, actually I'll go ahead, since I have two crystal rows, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Ah, okay, yep, let's do it. And then what happens is I draw two tiles, like it says, and then I'm going to uh, take one, place the other in the outdoors, and then I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna place it down. I'm just go ahead and place it up here. So that's gonna complete this row. Oh wait, no I'm not, that was stupid, sorry. For some reason that looked like a crystal to me. I'm not placing it up there, I was right the first time. I'm gonna place it down here uh, because I'm gonna try to complete this row and have the same. And now I'll put it in a different column so maybe I can get all blue and hopefully I can get all green there. So my risk didn't pay off super well right there but it's not horrible. So now she looks at these and she loves all these greens here. So what she's gonna do is immediately go down here, take one from the bag, put it in the outdoors. That's a crystal which is worth one point. But she's really liking these, and it's going to be, she's absolutely going to take this bottle. She knows that I want a bottle here, and I want a green bottle bad. So she's going to take this immediately. So this is one, so she's going to draw two from here. And then she's going to go ahead and complete this, I think, just like I did. And she's going to take this because it has a crown on it and place that into that. So now that's going to be worth four points for her because they were all the same color. She's going to find me a four-pointer. All right. So she scored maximum points on that row. She's also scored maximum points on that column. Now, what do I want to do? Um, I don't, that green one's not what I want because I, I want to fill a row, a column of all green, but pff, that's a shell. That's not really going to help me here. Um, this tile, just so you know, means that I'm going to draw one out of the bag and just take it and place it in my, in my curio, my whatnot cabinet. That's a little, and you score a point though at the end of the game for, for when you do that. Um, oh man, I have not been focusing on these at all. Let me see if I've completed these. That's really horrible. All right, complete a row and a column. I forgot about some of these, that she was the first one to do that, which I could have done that. Um, let me make sure that I didn't complete any other ones. Uh, four of the same object type anywhere. I don't think I have that one, right? Because I've got three animals over here. That's right. Um, one column of each four, same, no, 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 we don't have that. And we don't have two of that, that. And then for a different object in a different object type in each row. And actually I did complete that uh, before she completed that. Right, uh, make sure, right? Different object, different object, different object. Oh no, I don't, yeah, I do. Cause I've got a different object, yeah. So I completed that. Okay, sorry about that y'all. I was getting so focused on this other stuff. So this will be worth one point at the end of the game. This will be worth two points for her at the end of the game. I need to focus back on that. Sometimes when you're playing these, doing these videos and you're playing two players and stuff, you get a little, you get a little, forget things occasionally. All right, so what do I wanna do? I think, I, th 
I think I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna come down here, put two tiles, I love this action, draw two tiles from the bag, and now I'm gonna have a lot of choices. Wow, okay. Okay. Don't love that draw, because now I'm gonna, I can do this. Do I wanna risk it and just go for a point? Let me see what I have here. Um, this would help me complete this crystal row, but it's gonna mess up this column. Now, I, if I get a column of all different colors, it's going to score me two points. So it doesn't, you know, totally mess it up. It's very tempting because it's worth two points. So it basically would wash out me not having if I can get one in each different color. I think I'm going to do that to make it a little simple. I'm going to take this. I'm going to place it down there, uh, which is going to be worth three points. Okay. Then I wouldn't mind. I could complete this. If I had a different, it says one row with the same object which I have and then one row with different. The problem is, is I would love to have a blue object right here. Um, because I could take this one and boom, I'm done, and, but I'm not gonna score anything. I'm only, I'm not, I'm not anything, sorry. I'm only just gonna score one point, which isn't ton for, for completing that. But I would score one point for that and I would score two points for that. Ah, oh, that's the pool of this game. I'm gonna go big or go home. I'm gonna play, take this tile right here, which is gonna be worth a point at the end of the game. I'm gonna draw whatever out of the bag and hope that it works for me. Wow, that was lucky. <laughs> this means, so I draft, this is my tile. What I'm going to do now is sweep this away and draw four more tiles and put them into the outdoors. So I'm not going to lie, I got a little lucky on that right there. Hopefully I can draw something decent here, though I don't see any blues. Oh boy. I had gotten lucky. Oh, actually, that's not so bad. That works. So I could sweep it again. But, but I kind of like this one right here. I like it a, a decent amount because it has a crown. It will help me complete my bottle row, plus it's a different color here. So actually, I like that. Though I'm, ah, man, such difficult decisions sometimes. Because um, I'm looking at that, the thing is she could actually complete that, and that's two whole points in her for her. Um, now these are super valuable. Like these are very important to get to. But doing this, I'm also heading towards this one right here a little. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to stick with that. Um, mm-hmm, I am, yep. Oh, I, I also, whenever I took that, I forgot that when I took the uh, red, I got this one as well for the same object type anywhere. So now three to two, so yeah, let's do it. Let's just do that, I'm good. I've got a ton of crystals here. It's gonna show me a lot of points at the end of the game. Now for her, um, she doesn't wanna take the big risk here. She's okay with giving me the first turn. <clears throat> She's gonna come down here and do this, sweep this away and draw four more tiles. I don't know why I put that off camera there. All right. Okay. I keep throwing it off camera. I kinda like, I love the way the bag looks. It's a beautiful color, actually. That's why I left it on camera. All right. So, what do we have here? Okay. If she takes this animal, she completes... Nope, I took it with my with the crystals. Oh, okay. She doesn't have any reds or any yellows. Doesn't love, doesn't like that at all. So she's going to have to do at least one of these columns probably where she's, yeah. Um, wow, that was a really not a great draw for her at all. Uh, I think she's going to take this blue bottle and she's going to place it. That was... I had had some had some good luck my way. She's had some really bad luck turn her way there. I'm going to place it in this row. And then I think she's going to do the same thing as me because she doesn't... Hold up. Yeah. she That crown is tempting, but it's not really going to help her with... Unless she wants to... Unless she wants to just try to complete one of those to finish that two points right there. But I don't think she wants to. She's going to take this and just go for it. Go big or go home. See what happens. And she goes, ooh, not great. I mean, the positive is it has a crown, which is going to be worth a point. 
The negative is if she places it here, then she doesn't meet either condition, which means all of those have the same color or all of them are different colors. If she throws it over here, which is what she's probably gonna do, she is going to, she's going to eliminate the chance of having all four of the same colors. But positively, she has yet another crown. All right, and so we would do the outdoors thing and then put these back into player order. At the end of the game, a couple notes, you're gonna score points for who's in these places. So these places are highly coveted towards the end of the game because three points in this game is really, really pretty big. Um, so what do we score in, What do we score at the end of the game? I said I'm not gonna play all the way through it, is we're gonna score the points for these completed rows and columns like we have right now. I have seven points right now. She has seven points and that, and there's only one more round this thing is over. Um, we're also going to be scoring you know, points for these cards, if we have these cards here. Any points for these, uh, these to pieces, whatever. Uh, um, and we're gonna, again, score a point for every single crystal that we have. And we're also gonna score a point for every single uh, crown that we have here. So I think it's a fairly tight game. She has a ton of crowns. All of her tiles, but one has a crown on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a lot of points right there. Uh, but I have a ton of crystals and even two crystals with crowns, which is huge as well. Uh, so anyway, so that's the way that's a really good, hopefully a good feel for how the whatnot cabinet is played. Let's talk about art and components. All right, so let's talk about art and components. Uh, I enjoy Beth Sobel's uh, artwork, so I'm excited about this. I think it actually looks quite nice. I really liked the, uh, where's the box cover at? I don't know what it is about the box cover. I like kind of like the clean look to it. Actually, let's put it there. I kind of like the clean look to it. It actually really drew me in whenever I, I saw that uh, for the first time. I think the art on the tiles are, are good. I like these pawns. I think they're nice. Like This game is like around $30. So um, I think you get a lot of, I mean, I think it's worth it. This is a really nice canvas bag here. You know, these pieces are, are cardboard and so are these tiles. But I mean, they're fine. They're pretty good, thick, decently thick cardboard. Um, nothing really to complain about. You know, this is, this is okay. I mean, it doesn't look, you know, fantastic, but the iconography is really good and it's really simple. So I like that about it. I really like the color palette that they chose too with these. So I have really nothing to complain. I, the, the teals and the oranges and the Beth Sobel art, it looks all really good. And again, at a good price point, like a $28, $30 or something like that. I've got nothing to complain. And this is a, you know, a, a fairly small box, right? All right. So, but there goes the box, but is the game good? So let's talk about the gameplay. All right, so here's some things that I really enjoy about this game. Number one, I'm a pretty big fan of finding a good, what I would say, you know, like a thinky filler. And I think that that's kind of where this, this fits in. A, a filler that's easy to teach, that has some meat on the bones. And that's what I get with this game. Like, I get, it's very simple. All I have to do is tell folks, hey, you place your pawn and you do you know, what it says. You've got this act, this uh, card here that's gonna tell you what you do. And you're just drawing tiles and you're putting them into this whatnot cabinet and you have 12 spots. But oh my gosh, it is so grueling sometimes. I think if you watch the gameplay, you're like, oh, I wanna do this, but I wanna do that. There's a lot of push your luck in this game. Um, man, should I go ahead and, and try to get this row with all bottles? But man, that's gonna, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I could easily go ahead and complete it right now and score the one point, but if I want to push my luck and try to complete that the other way, I'm going to score three points. And I really enjoy that about the game, actually. Um, these actions, I think, they're, 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 they're fun actions to try to debate with, with where you want to go because I like that mechanic of the turn order that's going to take place. Like right here, you're going to put one into the outdoors and draw two. Here, you're going to put two into the outdoors and draw two. You might not think that that's a, a big deal. I mean, you might think, well, I'm just going to go ahead and take this because, heck, I can put two in the outdoors. Maybe I'll have a better chance. But then you're going to be one behind in turn order the next round, and that could be really critical, especially when you're coming up into that that final round of play. You know, uh, you're, you, man, whenever you can score points based on where you put, put those, or you might really need something because it gets even more critical as the game progresses. At first, you have more flexibility into what you're going to do because, hey, it, the world is your oyster. It's wide open. As the game progresses, man, it gets really tight and you're trying to figure out, oh, how can I squeeze this over there? And you're also, I mean, if you're playing optimally, you're also looking at your opponents and you're thinking, all right, now's the time to sweep those away because he or she's going to score a ton of points. If I don't do that, they'll go to the outdoors and they're going to score a bunch of points. Um, I really like that. But I also really like, you know, if it, if it wasn't for these cards, these things really kind of 
kick the game up another notch because I really do enjoy games where there are objectives that you're racing towards because it, it makes the decisions even tougher. Like, man, I want to score four points here, but you know what? If I got two points here and two points here, it's the same thing. But wow, that would be sweet if I got four points here and two points there, which would be six, but I think she'll beat me to it if I allow her to have it. So, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, sw that's a pretty big swing. I'm either going to take two points or she's going to take two points. Ah, what do I do? I think it's cool. And then I also really like how you have the crowns on here. And then these are different every time, just so you know. Um, you're going to, so, and then we're, we went, you also get the points for how many crystals, you know, you get. So those are decisions that are interesting. There's also a stack of these cards right here that you're going to have, you know, different types of, I don't know, I'm pulling up this, sorry. You're going to have a bunch of different types of objectives right here. I believe... Uh, if I, I believe there are 15 different ones and you're going to place five out there. So there's going to be a lot of different combinations as you play the game. You know, whenever I was looking, when I was first playing this game, I really thought it was it was neat. And I was uh, wondering, is this going to feel samey at all? Um, and I don't, it really doesn't much. Like, And the reason is because these objectives change, uh, this changes. And then in addition to that, there is a little fascination expansion I'll just mention here as I'm talking about the game. And what this does is... Players are going to have one of these green and one of these purple cards. And basically, as the rounds progress, they're going to show, slowly flip these over so people can see what they are. But at the end of the game, what they're going to do is if I had these two colors, I would score a point for every blue crystal in my whatnot cabinet, which, boom, that would be... That's not a point. It's actually more than that. How many points is that? No, it is one point. Okay, just wanted to make sure. One point for every blue crystal I have. But if I have the most crystals then I also score a point. If I have the most blues, then I also score a point as well. And in a game this tight, it really, really matters. And uh, I think that that's really, really cool. So I, man, Dr. Finn, Steve Finn does great. And Eduardo Baroff did a fantastic job working with him on this game. The Beth Sobel art is very, very nice. I'm going to get into my final thoughts. I really like this game. I really like it a lot. Uh, it is a nice little grueling think like filler thinky filler is what i would say this game can play very fast um one one thing that I, I didn't mention in my gameplay thoughts but when it comes to negatives there is some luck in this game so if people if you just absolutely don't like luck then you might struggle with this here's the thing i don't like luck very much and if you follow me at all i don't like there's there's not a lot of situations where uh, i'm okay with luck in games however if it's a pretty quick lickety split game where there is absolutely strategy in it. And uh, then I don't mind it so bad because I can play this game with my wife and we can be done in like 15, 20 minutes. Boom, the game's over, probably 15 minutes. And then we just go, all right, let's play that again. And I love that about it. I love how much I feel like fun, grueling, and, and it's the grueling decisions. That, that That's fun. Oh, I want this tile, but I want this tile. Oh, I'm racing for this, but she might get that first. I love those decisions that you're making in this game. I just really like this game a lot. Um, Dean didn't like it as much as I did, which I'm surprised because Dean really likes Steve Finn, Dr. Finn, an awful lot. But this one, he didn't, he didn't like the luck factor of drawing out of the bag and towards the end of the game. But this is what I think. I like how in this game you're mitigating that luck. Like if you're going to go for all the same color, then you're really going, you know, in this column, then you're going super high when it comes to luck. You're ra ra ratcheting up that luck factor, um, that risk factor. But if you're going to go, okay, it's late in the game. Let's go ahead and go for different colors. Then you're, you're ratcheting it down a little bit. And I love that pool back and forth of how much luck do I want to push? Um, how much do I not want to push? Uh, I'm looking at what my opponent's doing. Uh, I want to take this action, but I want to go first in turn order. I This is such a brilliant, quick game. Um, I'm going to give this thing an 8 out of 10. I really, really enjoy this game. And, and for the price, man, I... I to me, it just seems like it's just a, it's a no-brainer to go pick this thing up and, and get this thing to the table. Really nice, thinky, filler game that I, I do, I highly recommend. If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to it. If you'd like to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash MeepleTown. You can go to at MeepleTown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we're Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to MeepleTown. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to our Patreon supporters for making content like this possible. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash MeepleTown. To follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, find us at MeepleTown Games. Finally, to connect with us and other residents of MeepleTown, you can join Guild 3407 at BoardGameGeek.com. Until next time, thanks for coming down to MeepleTown.